So you guys who follow me on Twitter know that I run a poll every single time I complete a game. And that poll basically determines which game I should play next. And you guys vote on a group of games that I decide on. And whatever has the most vote is the game that I start playing. And so over this past weekend, I ran a poll. And in that group of games that were on that poll, the one that won was For Honor. Now, For Honor was released earlier this past year, and it was part of my 2017 games of backlog. And uh, I bought the game for, I believe, $15 to $20 on Amazon back when it had a sale. And, uh, you know, it was still wrapped in the cellophane, right? So For Honor won the poll. And I went over to my PS4 and I took the game and I put it in. And I started playing it on Saturday. Now, almost immediately when I started the game, I realized that, okay, this was very different from what I'm used to and I don't know if I'm going to like it. Now, I played the game at E3 2016 and my review of that game at E3 2016 was, I thought this game was boring and it was slow paced and it was extremely easy and I wasn't really that impressed. Now, that was also uh, marred by the fact that it was an always online game as well. Even though this game does have a single player campaign, it is required that you stay online in order to play it, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. But that's besides the point. So I started this game, right? And before I even got to see a main menu for this game, it threw me into a tutorial of how to play. And so I'm like, okay, and I start playing this tutorial, and it's running me through a lot of objective-based uh, missions. And I'm like, okay, this feels like a tutorial for multiplayer. Well, that makes sense. It has This game has more of a multiplayer focus, so they probably just, if people want to jump into the multiplayer and completely ignore the campaign, they probably have this tutorial in place to do that. So it takes me about 20 minutes to get through this entire tutorial, which is comprised of four parts and uh, four different mission structures. And it teaches you about combat and different uh, game modes, I guess, that they have available. And then the game jumps me into this really cool trailer. And it shows like these really awesome, very beautifully rendered concrete statues, like lifting up off of this black liquid of some sort. And so I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, this is pretty cool. This looks really nice. And then it, the camera pulls back, and it, it's an advertisement for a multiplayer expansion. <laughs> and so I'm, like, looking at this, I'm, like, it, it's funny because, you know, I was at Jacob's house playing it, obviously. And uh, I said, are you fucking kidding me? And he said, what, what, what's the problem? And <laughs> I said, this is a freaking... Uh, this is a freaking advertisement before you even see a menu there's an advertisement for a multiplayer expansion pass and so I, I'm already feeling a little bit annoyed at this point because I'm like okay I don't have I, I, I haven't even got to see a main menu yet already they're teaching me about multiplayer game modes and they're showing me a trailer to buy the new multiplayer expansion pass and I'm just like okay this is annoying so I finally get to the menu, and I'm a bit disjointed about on um, the different options. I was disappointed that the game didn't support um, HDR, but what it does have is it has two modes, a high resolution mode, which basically on the PS4 Pro equates to a 1440p image. However, I will say this game is one of the best 1440p upscaled games I've seen on the console. This game is beautiful, and thanks to the temporal anti-aliasing, no jackies anywhere, and it remains sharp. And it also has like a, a, a an ultra graphics mode where you can increase the graphics at the at the cost of the resolution, obviously, right? So I just left it on its default, which was the high resolution mode, and I was not disappointed at all with the visuals. I thought the game looked incredible. In fact, repeatedly at times during the campaign of the game, I was like, "Gosh, the the, the textures, the 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 cloth physics, the environments look incredible. The lighting is beautiful. Like like." damn, this is a really nice looking game, right? And uh, it's just, it really is. It, it truly is a gorgeous game to look at. However, I get into the campaign, right? And it plays this cool trailer and you this war is breaking out and you, and you play as this knight. This knight has to defend his castle. And so I'm fighting all these random people and I realize a couple seconds into, you know, me sort of walking down to where I'm supposed to go, the game threw me into another tutorial. 
<laughs> and so I'm like, are you kidding me? You're going to teach me to play the game after it was mandatory that you taught me to play the game before I even saw anything. So already I'm being already my time is being wasted relearning the game again after I just learned how to play the game. And so it goes through these four stages of, of freaking um, of tutorials. And these stages were literally the same exact stages and tutorial sections that the first tutorial taught me. It was the same thing, except it was in a different area. And obviously it was more geared towards the single player campaign. So I'm just I'm a little bit like annoyed at this point because the game's like treating me like i'm an idiot the game is not a difficult game to learn it's it's very simple you know kingdom come you guys are right now seeing kingdom come deliverance um this is the game that i'm currently playing right now on my pc and i love this game to death but it is a very complex game in fact the first six hours of this fucking game has story progression but it is also teaching you the different elements of how to play the game so effectively this game has like a six hour tutorial when you really get down to it however the way it deals with those six hours it doesn't just say here's a tutorial of bullshit here's some cutscenes, and there you go right you actually feel like you're you're progressing through the game there's no sense of time wasted like there is in for honor so you know i'm playing through the first mission and uh, the way I guess they have it structured is you have three different mini campaigns. And these mini campaigns are the knights, you have um, the uh, the samurais, and then the other group. I forgot the name of them. Um, uh, I forgot the name of the other group of people, right? But you have three different mini campaigns, and each of these mini campaigns have a, have a set of missions that you kind of go through. And so I'm like, okay, this is a bit weird and uh, and so i just start off by playing the night campaign that since that was the first it literally says chapter one nights and i was like okay obviously they want you to play chapter one first and the one i wanted to play which was the samurai was the last chapter obviously so i started playing this game and i get through the first couple missions and at this point i'm about two hours in right i just had like this sudden realization i'm just like i am not enjoying this I've given the game two hours of my time and I still don't know my main character's name. I still don't know what the story is about and I still am not doing anything worthwhile. There's no, there's cutscenes in this game, right? For its story. But the game almost is immediately insulting because you don't know how, what your character looks like. You don't have a relationship with any of the characters. There's no immediate story going on. You're basically a knight, and and you lose. You the first mission is you defending a castle. You guys lose, and because you're able to beat this guy's um like head of security or whoever this guy's second second best knight, um, because you're able to defeat him, he recruits you. And it's you're just like immediately switching sides, and there's no purpose to any of it. I'm just like uh okay i'll guess i'll just go with it right and i i'm doing these missions and i don't know who these people are and i'm also doing missions that again are just a repeat of the multiplayer objectives they showed me in the tutorial so i'm just like i'm playing the same fucking thing over and over and over again and the combat i mean there are points in this game where you can run past everybody and go straight to your objective and the game progresses and i'm just like <laughs> you could tell that the effort was not in the single player campaign now listen if you enjoy the game good for you you know the great thing about games is it's an art right and art is subjective it can mean different things to different people different people can have different opinions on it my opinion of for honor from a single player standpoint was that it was completely worthless and the game makers did not put effort in the single player campaign instead betting everything on multiplayer well let me tell you about multiplayer right multiplayer is based on quick fads and pure luck basically because think about it all of these great multiplayer success stories right now we're on the battle royale craze right everybody wants to go play and do battle royale battle royale it games like players unknowns battlegrounds is the game that really popularized it fortnite added a battle royale game mode which is also extremely popular and no, you're playing, you're, you're, you, you basically get in on this quick fad and then 
you basically are popular for a couple years and it dies out. And so, I mean, I don't know why why developers continuously try to put their faith in multiplayer and, and why gamers don't realize that it's such a, a limited experience. Like your enjoyment with the game is, is limited. You have a set amount of time from when you can play that game to when that game is going to be uh, turned off and disabled. And I love multiplayer as much as the next guy, right? But when it affects your single player can like I don't even know why they put a single player campaign in For Honor. I really don't because it's it's a collection of objective based modes where you play against dumbass AI and all you're doing is basically a tutorial for the multiplayer. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that the multiplayer is a lot of fun in For Honor. A lot of people like the multiplayer in For Honor, and that's great. That wasn't why I was playing the game. I was playing the game for its single player. I bought the game with the intention that all I was going to touch was the single player. And that's why I didn't buy it on release. That's why I bought it for a cheap $15. But regardless, I, at this point, two, two and a half hours in, I just had enough. I flipped out. I, I, you know, threw my controller next to me. I didn't actually throw it, but I, I, I threw my controller next to me and I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and suffer through this. It's a waste of my complete time. Why would I sit here and play this shitty game? And then at that point, as soon as I said that it dawned on me, I was like, oh my God, I wasted hours, hours playing shitty games and I real I was thinking back on all the games I played, and I was like, oh my god, I wasted so much time playing these shitty games for no reason. You know, it, it would make sense if I was doing a review, right? If I reviewed games, and I used to review games, right? But it, it would make sense if I still reviewed games and I was playing For Honor with the intention to review it. But I'm not. I was playing for honor for myself. You guys don't care because you don't see the gameplay of it, you know, but, but I don't review games anymore. And it's not like anyone would care if I uploaded for honor gameplay. Anyway, the game's old. It's over a year old at this point. So why am I sitting here suffering through this? And I just took the game out and for the first time in a very long time, and I mean a very, very long time, I quit on a game again. Usually, um, my ego gets the better of me. Usually, I say, I'm not one of those idiots who quits games. If I buy a game, if I play a game, I'm going to make sure I finish it. And why? What purpose do I have to finish a game? I don't get anything for finishing the game. I get trophies, meaningless trophies. I, I, I get nothing but the ability to say, hey, I finished the game. And who cares? It's, it's a video game. It, it, it doesn't help me in my daily life. It, it's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy playing video games. But it, it's not like it has a significant impact on my, my day-to-day life. It's, it's worthless. It's, it, it's entertainment purely for the sake of being entertained. So it's like why I, – I, I just – I just had this crazy, uh, this crazy moment where I just sat there and I realized that I wasted my time on a ton of games. And so, you know, I was talking with Jacob and I said, I said, Jake, I, I need to go through my whole game collection because I'm sitting here collecting games for no reason whatsoever. And I'm sitting here collecting games that are shitty. I mean, I've actually bought games that were shitty for my game collection. Some of those games that I showed off in my PS3 game collection, I bought recently. And I bought recently even though I knew I didn't like the game. I mean, that could have been that could have been dinner. That could have been, you know, lunch. It, it could have been it could have been going towards a game that I really wanted to play. A game that I truly enjoyed. And so I went through my entire game collection. My Xbox 360 game collection. My PS3 game collection. My my Xbox One and PS4 game collection. I went through every single one. And I picked out the games that I personally felt that I didn't enjoy. The ones I didn't like. The ones I wasn't going to return to. For sure. And the ones that I bought and haven't played. But I bought 
even though I wasn't into the game and I knew at the time I wasn't that into the game. So I just bought them to buy them. So I'm just like, I, I, I go through my games and I, and I make this video on Twitter and uh, there's a lot of games. I mean, as you guys, I'm going to throw up a screenshot here. You guys can see there's a ton of games on here. Now I know some people have different opinions about this, the ones I chose. I mean, some of these games, like I, I, I put Forza 6 on my Xbox One um, in that, in that uh, group there because I realized I'm like, I bought Forza 6 and I never played it. Like, I never played Forza 6, and that's not because I didn't like Forza. I love Forza to death, but I don't have time to sit down and put hours into a racing simulator. And then I also own Forza 7, and I still never played Forza 7. So why am I focusing on Forza? Why, why would I buy Forza 6 and Forza 7 when more or less the racing simulators are kind of the same? I mean, I'd rather have Forza 7 because Forza 7 is Xbox One X enhanced, and that's the game that, that kind of looked amazing on the Xbox One X. But I'm sitting here, I'm just like, why would I, I? I'm buying some of these racing simulators, and I'm just like, I know I didn't. Like Gran Turismo 5 and Gran Turismo 6. I hated Gran Turismo 5. I said that in my game collection. This game is terrible. I, I said Gran Turismo 6 is basically more of the same. I didn't like it. I loved Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, though. That's why I still have the game in my collection, you know? But I'm just like, why? I just had this crazy moment. And I, it, just, it just came to a realization that life's too short to play bad games. And for a lot of young people out there who are watching this, I know that all it, it, it seems like all you have right now is time on your hands. And enjoy it. You know, it really enjoy it because there comes a point, and I'm realizing this now more and more, there comes a point where you just can't do it anymore. And I can't sit there and spend my free time playing shitty games anymore. I can't do it. My time is too valuable. I'm, I'm going to be 24 years old next month. I need to really focus on myself. I need to focus on building a secure future. Um, I need to focus on, on doing a lot of things. I said earlier this year that this year was going to be the year of revenue for me. I was going to focus on my income and really try to capitalize on building um, different streams of income for my sense of security and for my future. And I can't do that when I'm sitting here putting you know hours upon hours into shitty games, feeling like I'm obligated for some reason to play these games. You know, I, I just can't do that. I need to focus on when I do play games, I need to make sure that I'm enjoying doing it because there's going to come a point where even where, I, where I'm even older and I don't even have time to put in the time that I have now to play those games. And uh, I it's just crazy. I just realized that now. So what am I doing to all these games? Well, I'm giving some away to my friends. Um you know, because they, some of them are game collectors that are looking to collect games for their console or consoles. And uh, some of the games that I have in my collection, uh, they have been looking for for a while. So I'm giving some away to my friends and uh, I'll probably be looking to sell a few. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, but I, I, there's no purpose to have some of those games anymore, you know, and I need to focus on really making sure that when I invest in a game, it's an experience that I am excited for experience I know that I will like or at least one that where I feel that I can take a chance on and I'm pretty I'm bound to get something out of it and I really need to uh to just focus on that element on that side of me so I mean this is this is really just a realization video for me I really wanted to know if you guys tend to do that you know I think I think what I'll find here in the comments is that most of the younger people will be like yeah I kind of play through bad games and I I sometimes force myself to play through them poorly um even though i hate them and uh i think i'll find like the older people probably will completely understand where i'm coming from but yeah you know it, it feels great i cleared out a lot of sh uh, shelf space right now on my uh brackets here for all my games it, it looks it looks much more bare bones than it did before but then i'm looking at all the games and i'm like oh that was fun that was a good time oh look at that i remember that that, that was such a great game. Oh, I want to go pl back and play that again. And it's like, huh, those were good times. And that's what I want to look back and remember on when, when, I, when I look at these games. I want to look back and say, yeah, that was a really fun experience. So let me know what you guys think. Really interested to hear your thoughts. Um, 
again, this is a big, uh, this is kind of a big realization for me. For a long time, I've been sitting here pur purchasing damn near everything that comes out in the year, sometimes purchasing games from brand new genres that I don't even know if I'll like them, but hey, a lot of people say they're great, and uh, even though it belongs to a group of, of games that I wasn't particularly interested in, I'll give it a chance. That's kind of like Persona 5. I'm not interested in that style of game. I can already tell that just by looking at the gameplay. It's turn-based combat, yet I own it, and I bought it on Black Friday. Why? You know, I, I know for a fact that it's going to be one of the last games, if ever, I try out. And when I try it out, there's a very small, 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 really super tiny chance that I'll actually really enjoy the game. Again, you don't really know until you play a game, right? But I've played in a lot of games over the years. Um, again, a lot of them being very crappy, but also a lot of them being very surprisingly good. And I have a good grasp now on what I need to focus my time on. And I'm not saying that I'm never going to give a, a brand new games a chance. Um, there's obviously going to be some games that I'm going to you know, still continue to give a chance to. But it's going to come in the form of caution um, careful purchasing decisions, and uh, at times, if needed, rentals. I need to really, you know, realize that there's other options on the table as well, other than just buying a game for 60 bucks and taking a chance. You don't have to do that anymore. We have the internet. We have Redbox. We got all these things, you know, going on. So, anyway, I'll talk with you guys later. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Really super interested. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go back to enjoying playing Kingdom Come Deliverance. This is a beautiful game it's a perfect game for me as well a long single player uh rpg set in a realistic 1400s uh or i'm sorry that'd be, it'd be the 15th century actually uh timeline and uh it's not fantasy based it's it's based off of real history and this game is fantastic this is what i'd rather focus my time on playing games like this thank you guys so much have a good one and uh really interested to hear your thoughts thanks